Alright, so Matthew here. I am with my boy Samir, who uh, also works with Corey. In fact, he's in the Ultimate program and he's in Corey's inner circle. So he really took the plunge. And uh, basically, what we want to do is just ask and answer some questions about kind of the process of what it's like to really go through the process start to finish and, and learn from Corey Sky and just all the crazy changes that you know we've been through and really what's involved because I think a lot of guys are curious. There's a lot that goes into it so we kind of want to just be an open book here and and just talk about how exciting this shit really is. Why don't you talk a little bit about what got you into Corey's teachings in oh, the yeah. first place and just like all the wild shit you've been through. Uh, well, it would take me probably days to talk about all of it, but yeah, in 2012, back in 2012, I heard about Magnetic Mindset and I just decided to give it a try. It was uh, back then when I was going through like a bunch of different teachers, uh, I was just, every fucking few months I would switch a program and then be following someone else in the pickup community. And when I heard Corey's um, audio for the first time, um, I don't remember what exact recording it was, but he talked with so much depth and he didn't talk about girls at all. He was talking about me improving myself and it clicked for me right then. I was like, this is correct, you know, like he's actually talking about improving myself. Then I went ahead and downloaded Magnetic Mindset, which, you know. You didn't pay for it? I did not pay for my first Corey Sky program, man. I didn't so, either. <laughs> and I fucking listened to it. So you need to cut that part out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so you bought the Magnetic Mindset program. I didn't buy it. I downloaded it. Bro, we can uh, say that on camera. So. I bought it. And, uh, <laughs> See, it was some belief. <laughs> But, you know, I, like the importance is that one recording is what got me here today. If I didn't give it a chance, I was going through so many different teachers, so, like, I wasn't even paying attention. But when I heard Corey speak about how it's not about men, and it's all about me, it was just unbelievable. Like, first time I didn't even believe it that much, um, but something about him struck me and I was like I need to listen to more of this and two three recordings in I was so I was like wow this is something you know this is something completely different from any other teachers out there that are all after like chasing women like approaching fucking this this technique that technique I was just so fucking tired of it because five years before that I tried all of that I would go out to bars I would have memorized all these routines and all these techniques, like how to stand and how to fucking like uh, make a joke or something, like step by step process. And I would always lock up. I remember, like I would go and even if it's like not girls that I want to talk with, like any girls that I just want to even start a conversation with, I would just lock up because there's so much fucking shit in my head, <laughs> and I'm always in my head because of that. And when I listened to Corey, his message was, do the affirmations consistently and change your mindset first before anything. So I did that. I did affirmations for maybe two weeks tops. And I started seeing results in my life already. I started seeing real life changes like right away. I went out and girls were coming up to me and talking to me just like he said they would. Um, I was just more confident. I was walking around freely. So that's what got me into affirmations, and I, I think affirmations are a big part of our journey, you know. Um, but there is a good and bad side, uh, because I realized after five years of going through a lot of it, and now working with Corey one-on-one, -on -one, I realized that some of the affirmations, you can interpret them uh, the way you want, because your ego wants it to be that way, uh, such as saying, there is no competition. Back then, when I said that, I said it from a completely egotistical point of view, saying, I'm the best, like, everybody else is beneath me. So, there wasn't, like, a lot of depth 
to the, the It was all superficial. Yeah. yeah, most of the affirmations I did back then, except for the ones that were like really true to me back then, uh, which 90% of them weren't. So I was just doing superficial work. And even then it produced results. But what ended up happening each time was I would have the girls approaching me. I would have hot girls like right there. But I would lock up like when I actually make a move on them. Like something inside me still didn't believe it. Like affirmations were doing their job. But something inside me just did not trust and did not believe that I truly deserve it. Five years later, I found out why it was. Uh, he made me go deep inside, write out my insecurities, write out about my childhood, and now we know exactly why I was doing that. And since I addressed that issue, I became really free. Like two weeks ago, it really fucking clicked for me. And now when I go out, I, I, I'm more like, it just changed my body language, it changed everything. So. Um, yeah. yeah, affirmations, if you're doing affirmations that are like way outside of your reality at this point, then obviously they'll work, but you most likely, like me, won't accept it yeah. uh, until you actually like really believe it from the inside. Yeah, it's wild how many guys are doing this on such a superficial level. Yeah. And I think, you know, part of that and Corey kind of takes responsibility for that because he's always talked about women, he's always talked about affirmations, but you know, when I started, he would tell me all the time, you know, there's, you know, almost like with this like, sadness of, of being misunderstood, like, yeah. there's so much more to me than what you see. And I guess what he's really getting at is the depth. Yeah. You can do an affirmation, you know, so many guys have that, they go through the process, they start seeing results, all those results, but with no real foundation. They're yep. still having all this crazy resistance, they're still having all this internal battle, all this fighting, and I was one of those guys, which is why you Absolutely. Know, it never yeah. lasted for me, and eventually I just fell back right into my old patterns. That's why so many guys are obsessed over affirmations, because like me, um, you see they work, I went through them six months consistently, didn't miss a day, didn't miss, one time during a day, I, I was doing it twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, and it was bringing all these results, crazy results that I've never imagined before. And for five years, remember, you know, I was struggling. So I was like, this is amazing, this is all I need. But, you know, there was a lot of fighting going on inside me. That's why, like, I was never truly even happy, like, where I was at. Um, now, like, I do more simpler affirmations instead of telling myself something about girls. Like that that comes after you yourself accept yourself and you're just like solid at your core. That's stuff Corey has been talking about since day one. You know, first line is magnetic mindset. You know, being great with women has nothing to do with women at all. You've got to work on being a great guy yourself. That's all fine. It's one thing talking about it. But it's an entirely different thing actually seeing it within you, seeing it within me, yeah. seeing it within all of these clients of our of Corey's. And it's wild because I guess the, the real question is, all right, I'm, I'm following your teachings, I'm you know, doing my affirmations, but there's still, what's, there's still like this missing link. And I'm trying to become a ladies' man, but what's missing, you know, what's missing is you're not a fucking man. <laughs> you have to become a man before you can be a ladies' man. Yeah. And seeing Samir, you know, gosh, he inspired me so much to actually really take my own journey further. It was just seeing him transform in front of my eyes. You know, he'd come down for a workshop, he'd come hop on a webinar, you know, he'd be one way, and then two weeks later, I'd see him again, he'd come down again, glowing. You know, the dude's just glowing, free, you know, magnetic, and I'm thinking, holy shit! And the the and wildest the wildest part about it, dude, I'll say is how little Corey's actually talked about girls with you. Yeah, no, like I've only been focused on myself, like uh, accepting who I am uh, and accepting everything around me. Uh, 
I, I look at the world completely differently now. Like, um, very little of my affirmation ever focused on girls since I started working one-on-one -on -one with them, which was like six months ago. And uh, now that I came down here to Sarasota, uh, there are no affirmations there about girls, but I read the wildest results with girls. <laughs> ever. Without girl <laughs> affirmations. You know, it's like, really cool seeing it happen from the ground up, you know, because I was one of those guys that kind of took, went the completely ass backwards route, you know, starting focusing 100% on girls, focusing on the affirmations, focusing yeah. on really trying to look sexy and feel yeah. sexy without a foundation. And then seeing somebody like Samir, who's Corey, really took and, and started off right from day one, you know, with the foundation, being a man, loving and accepting yourself, letting go of all and any attachment. Well, I'll be honest, uh, I came with a lot of garbage, you know. I wanted the same thing that guy that looks at his program and sees you guys talking about how crazy and free it is, you know, like how easy it is to attract girls. I was one of those guys that instantly wanted that, yeah. you know. But when I came down here, you know, after like two weeks or so, I finally realized like it's not going to happen that way, you know. Like Corey had one-on-one -on -one session with me and he was like, no, it's not going to work that way. You're trying to jump from one to ten. It's not going to be that way. It's, it's going to be a process of you building yourself and you discovering all these insecurities that you are ignoring. Like, uh, I wrote out so many things that I never thought were affecting me at this point, but they all happened in my childhood. I really had to dig deep and go back, but now I'm free. Now, like, I look at myself in the mirror and that's one of the main things I focus on. I'm like, I'm fucking free. <laughs> like, how fucking crazy, you know, like, six, like, I remember, like, not even six months ago, four months ago, I used to talk to you on the phone, how depressed did I sound? With the job that I fucking so hated. awful, dude. Uh, I, I would, like, cry because of the work I was involved in and all the pressure it put on me. Uh, this injury that I had that was never improving because of my negative Here's the mindset. thing about, so we, we actually became good friends. We became accountability partners. We call each other, like, once a week and just kind of share what we're going through. I guys don't realize, like, dude, four months ago, you were trapped in a job you hated. Mm -hmm. You had no life whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You were just depressed, stressed out all the fucking time to now seeing you free as a bird. Yeah. And none of that had to do with women. It had to do with you actually building yourself up, you know, working on the missing link, which is really, you know, going deep within and letting go of all the shit internally that's holding you back. And also doing things that I want to do, like uh, you guys were talking about permission. It's like Corey basically gave me permission to do whatever the fuck I wanted. <laughs> it's like that was missing from my life too, you know, because I worked in a business setting for 15 years, hospitality, and uh, I had to kiss ass, I had to dress a certain way, I had to be a nice little boy, you know, fucking customer service and all this. Uh, when I didn't want to, you know, like I wanted to be free and go out and enjoy my life and work somewhere where I like loved doing my job. It didn't seem like a job, you know, and that couldn't happen for such a long time because I wasn't ready to move on. I wasn't giving myself permission to get out of that trap and go and enjoy life, like spend money freely. Um, you know, say whatever I want, go out and play with girls, like, not with any intentions in mind, like, no, like, no attachment, no, yeah, needs. yeah, like, I fucking go to a bar and I poke a girl, like, it's all coming out of the childish place, you know, like, <laughs> playfulness, don't be going up for head of girls and poking them, that's not what we're saying, but it's, it's, he's in an entirely different place, and it's freaking wild, because I remember when you got into this stuff, like, what, five, six months ago, you know, you were all about, you know, I want to meet girls, I want this shit to be effortless, girls, yeah. girls this, girls that, just like I was. Well, yeah. the other night, like, what, two nights ago, last night, I don't even remember where it was, we're chilling at a pool, I look across, and he's fucking, he's flirting with some girl, and, you know, next thing you know, I'm in the hot tub, just kind of hanging out, and him and this girl are just fucking having sex in the middle of the pool, there's like four other people there, 
And um, he comes out of that, that pool, he just sits in the hot tub, he's just like, <sighs> and I'm like, well, that was pretty fun, wasn't it? And he's like, I, I really don't care, you know, I just feel good. And that right there is, is the difference, and that's what is really allowing you to start having these experiences now without need, because... Yeah. I remember how fucking frustrating it was for me. Yeah. And just always going out and always looking at looking for girls. Always looking, you know, should I be doing this? Should I be standing a certain way? What should I say? And just finally fucking being free of that, dude. That pain. Nah, that that should never be like um, any kind of pressure on yourself to, you know, see yourself from third person view. Like, how am I looking right now? Like. Am I, you know, am I positioned right? Am I, I mean, yeah, you don't want to fucking be a pussy and be squeezed in between five people, but they'll come as you become a fucking man. You just will own your space. Like, if there are people around you, they'll give you your space. It's a process. Like, if you are that guy right now, don't assume, don't fucking pretend to be Corey. Because Corey, you know, he's had fucking 25 years of experience and, He's been through a lot of trial and error. So, um, you know, I, I tried to jump to that position and never work because I came off so fake. Yeah. I had over 100 friends in Atlanta where I come from. Um, all of these friends, they were all superficial nice to me uh, because I used to be this big guy with huge muscles and used to wear like fucking cut off shirts and <laughs> walk into clubs, I got on it, my shit don't stink, you know, I can get any girl. That's because of affirmations I was doing and I was seeing girls coming up to me. But when I got an injury, when I lost all that, all these friends disappeared all of a sudden. I would go and they wouldn't even look at me. And it was hard for me to even get out of the house. Uh, it took me a while to accept where I was. But even then, I tried to fake it, fake it, until I actually, like, really started working with Corey six months ago and I moved on here and he told me right away that you're being too cool for school dude uh, and Corey doesn't sugarcoat shit <laughs> he told me that and it didn't click for me then it just you know really got to my ego and really hurt me so I was like what is he even talking about like how am I being there I've changed a lot but he's like if you weren't being too cool for school, you wouldn't be so like uptight when you were at bars and you wouldn't like not want to talk to people. You would just talk to a lady next to you, even if she's 50. You're being fucking uptight and until you let that go, nothing's going to change. So, you know, I have a question for you. So Corey always talks about, you know, letting go mm -hmm. and all of us, you know, I think we all know that we need to do that, you know, every time. Even before I worked with Corey, every time I've even had any remotely joyful, blissful experience that just involved myself or, you know, a girl, I, in that moment, I truly let go. You know, I wasn't trying, and we all know that we need to do that. And we all hear that all the time, you know, just stop giving a fuck, you know, be free, have fun. But seeing you actually do that, you know, and then somebody else who was actually trying it really hard to do that but still feels like they're really fighting themselves inside and, and just trying to stay present but then you know having all these thoughts and trying to let go and just let it happen yeah. you know that's a fucking tough battle a huge part of what caused you to let go oh because anybody realized. who really lets go is like it's letting go of what you think it needs to be you the know? whole scale. The like, whole the scale. Yeah, for one, the scale. <laughs> like with girls, you know, seeing it like, you know, I'm supposed to want these kinds of girls, you know, letting go of the looks completely, you know, yeah. on a superficial level. And, and when That's we what say, I was talking to Kevin about last night, and it really clicked for me. I wrote about it, but because he was complaining, um, like, you know, he had just got laid the night before. Kevin's a guy in the program. And yeah. he was like, yeah, but I'm still not at the place where I'm fully satisfied and updated tens where I can say I don't want tens anymore. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, tens, you know, it's all society's fucking brainwashing, like, programming 
that you have going. Oh, yeah, and then you got you know you got up. you got the guy saying you know right away okay yeah so that means you're just gonna go for ugly girls no it's not about that every girl you have is gonna be you know physically beautiful cute whatever but it's gonna be based off a much deeper connection to where you actually look at her and it's, you're not just looking at her like a fucking physical statue you know you're okay. looking her and you're fucking you're feeling the beauty see, of who see, she is only only difference to me what i cherish now is everything leading up to it and the tension build up uh the mutual attraction it's like when i go up to a girl now it's gonna change it's gonna be different it's gonna be more like you know do we both have this attraction it, it can't be one-sided yeah, well, and that's the thing. And when you feel that from both sides, like with that girl at the pool, I felt it. It's just a feeling. It's not explainable. It's like... What a fucking concept. Like, mutual. Yeah. It's gotta be... It's, it's gonna be mutual, you know? And if I don't have that with a fucking 10, I don't want her. Like, there's no point. Because it's gonna be same fucking sex, you know that I had with any other girl. Like, it's gonna be the same fucking physical feeling. And what's the difference? The difference for me, you know, what I want, want now with women is that feeling, that fucking mutual attraction where it's effortless and, um, you know, everything leading up to sex. Sex is gonna be great, obviously, because there's gonna be so much attraction. But I don't care if I even have sex with her. Like, Everything before that and everything, the whole experience is just going to be ecstasy in, in, to me. Like, I've had that with girls, and I've not had sex with them. And it was still great. Like, I remember every fucking moment with those girls. Yeah. Uh, just your eye connection. Like, every move that you make, she knows what you're doing. And every move she makes, like you know. Like, you're so in tune. Yeah, you, you like, really thinking for each other and shit. And it's like... It's like that real bond that, you know, it's not something you can work at, um, like bodybuilding, you know, like it's not like your biceps, you can go and do a specific exercise and eat a certain way, uh, take some supplements and it's there, like a few months later. Uh, it's, your workout is really going through fucking, like going out, having fun time, uh, you know, listening to Matt and Corey talk about all these things, internalizing it, writing about it. Writing has helped me so much, I can't even emphasize on it enough. Uh, just 10, 15 minutes a day, when you wake up, if you have this overwhelming thought about something, let's say you have this thought about, why do I feel this way with girls? Like, why do I get intimidated? Oh, whatever, you know. Uh, whatever overwhelming thought is in your mind the night before or when you wake up, write it as a heading and then write about it. Like, whatever comes up. And, uh, you know, you start to realize that all this shit you watch in the videos and everything, you are internalizing it. When you write it, it'll come up and it'll bring out the deepest, darkest things that you've been hiding. And you'll realize like how much it's impacting you just by watching it. Just by watching these guys talk over and over about it. Might seem very repetitive, you know, because it's very simple, but it has to be repeated over and over. And one of those times, it will click for you. Uh, and that's why Joe, like Corey, emphasizes on these small things like, you know, it's all about the feelings, uh, you know, uh, there is no competition. Like when you truly accept yourself for who you are, uh, everything becomes good. Like if there is shit there, it doesn't matter to you. You only see good in things. You go to a bar, you will only see the good people. Like bad people are there, but you like not even attract them to you. They, they won't even come close to you because you have this energy about you and in no time you'll have these good people surrounding you and you're having fun with them and nothing else can touch you and at that point everybody around you is your equals you start treating them as just 
fun people, you know, like all your goal is to have fun each day, each night. And then everything does become no competition because why would you fucking, why would I think man's my competition when we fucking go out and have so much fun? Like, he's there, you know, he's having fun with me. Why would we're I there ever for, fucking... We're there for each other, yeah. man. And when you're out and you're with a girl, you're there for each other. And, yeah, I could sit... This whole process of letting go, it's, it is really letting go, and it really is... In about, every aspect of your life, not just girls. Like, it only happens when you let go in every aspect. It's about really humbling yourself. Yeah. Like, I can sit here and say, you know... Corey, Corey can sit here and say, Samir can sit here and say, yeah, man, this is all about being a sexy motherfucker, being a ladies' man, you know, having, you know, seven girls that you're seeing that you can see and have an amazing time with any day. But it's not about that. You know, we can sit here and, and take it one for here, one step further and say, well, no, I mean, it's really just about feeling sexy, you know, looking in the mirror and dripping sex appeal and you have all of, you'll have all of that. It's not about that. It's about truly letting go. Yeah. And being humble. At the end of the day. Being humble and seeing and feeling love and acceptance and, and vulnerability and, and seeing everybody for, you know, their image that they're portraying themselves as and also seeing depth and, and seeing them for who they are. Seeing the, the child that's in them that's been hurt. Yeah. And there's wow. just so much depth to this process, guys. It's not just the fucking... There's a lot of depth in this shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the more you, you know, write about your story and write about anything that comes to mind, you'll realize you have a lot of debt. It's just all this bullshit is covering it. And huge part of this program, I realized after coming here, was uncovering my true self, my true essence. And it's beautiful when you, when you get a glimpse of it. And you go digging deeper because you're like, wow. You know, like, you catch a glimpse of it in your eyes in the mirror. And you want nothing else in life after that. <laughs> you're like, fuck. Like, that is it. You know, you, you, that's your connection with the source. You, you, you're connected with the source energy of who you and are. You, like, some, I cry, like, you know uncontrollably in front of the mirror when I get to that. It's like ecstasy. It's like being at a music show or something and your favorite song comes on and you just tear up because it brings up so many emotions. Like, uh, you know, I didn't used to think that it was related to any other areas of my life, life except for girls because I had that feeling with a few girls and thought that, that that's only possible with girls. But that's totally wrong yeah you can have that feeling walking down the street you see fucking something in the sky and it brings up that feeling for different people it's different some people are visual some people are you know they they hear shit like i am a big music lover so whenever like i'm at a show or something uh and my favorite song comes on i just tear up and all i feel is grateful like Gratitude for my life, for everyone around me, for this opportunity to be here, and I just hug my friends, and you know, it's it's just a moment of so much pureness, pure love. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be when you have sex or when you're even with a girl. Like it can happen at so many places. Walking on a beach, like uh, you know, I didn't used to think I can do that, but. Like if I really clear my head and I'm walking down the beach, 10 minutes later it just hits me. Like the magnificent of the nature, like of everything that's provided to us by the universe. Like it's so fucking grand. Nobody in their fucking mind, wildest fantasies could ever recreate this out of scratch. And we're seeing it right in front of us. It's like, Everything is so beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, you might be hearing this and you might, you know, be relating or, or you might be saying, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. And I guess what, what Samir is saying is like, this process, that moment in time where you really let go, you become in tune with 
so much more than what you've been seeing. And you, you actually, you really see yourself and, and you see all of the ways that you've been trying, all of the ways you've been seeking, everything that you thought you needed. I need that girl. I want this. I want that. I need to be this certain way. And just all this fucking hell that you've been putting yourself through that I've put myself through that he's put himself through and just saying I don't need to do any of that like everything that I'm seeking is already within me and really feeling that on a core level that's when you let go that's when you yeah relax that's where shit becomes effortless and you start seeing that beauty because that all around you go to the deepest level and accept who you are even the ugliest side of you, the worst side of you, uh, you know, we all have dark sides, accept it. Like, you know, you've done some fucked up shit in the past, accept it. Once you do that, then only you can let go truly because what is letting go? Letting go, huge part of letting go is letting go of judgment. And judgment is a huge one in this process because we go out and we start judging people like we fucking it's just so programmed in our head through media and everything through facebook and all this shit now because somebody doesn't hit a like button then your feelings are hurt all this bullshit so you had to kind of undo that process and once you stop once you accept yourself you have stopped judging yourself first of all and once you stop judging yourself then only you can stop judging yeah. everyone else. It's, and when that happens, you have truly let go. And you go out in the world just to have fun. Because everything is fucking fun. Like, every fucking moment You don't have to fucking fun. try. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Having what you want, being who you want, can be effortless. And this stuff's kind of hard to explain. And there, we can talk about this all day, but... The fact is, it's, it's a really powerful journey that you can go through and it's really the, the hidden link to becoming who you want to be and living that life. It's not just on a surface level, you know, saying you want more women and getting more women. It's really uncovering all the shit. The typical guy goes into Corey's teaching. He says he wants to be a ladies man. He says he wants to have this. He wants to have money. He wants to have that. But what he's really seeking and what he doesn't even know he's seeking is to have that fucking inner fulfillment yeah. and that that Samir is talking about, that I'm talking about, that, that we're really starting to experience. The only way to have that is to let go of the shit. And until you do, until you do, you can have all the women you want. You know, let's say that's yeah, what you want now. This, this guy, for I example. will give you five girls, but you will not be happy. More than anything, it's about having fun and truly, like, Letting go and fucking just let your guard down. Like Corey, he just tells me like simple one lines like, fucking go out and have fun, dude. Like that's what you came down here to do. You fucking hated your job. You hated the lifestyle you had. You came down here to have fun. So go out and fucking let your hair down and fucking let it all fly. Do shit that you're afraid of the most and it'll set you free. That's what it is. You know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly, dude. Like, Alright. Yep. Peace.